Good evening. Yes, I'm back after a very long and extended break, but it wasn't exactly a holiday. I, of course, have been in Australia. I began by staying in Alice Springs and filming in the outback, uh, and then after a couple of days, went into the jungle. I spent 23 nights in the jungle, living in pretty austere conditions. There were 12 of us to begin with. We whittled down to a final of three. I was very, very pleased to make the final three. All the others in the jungle came from the worlds of popular entertainment, pop music, soap operas, and a couple of professional sportsmen. I was the one, the odd man out really, because I came from the world of politics and current affairs. And yet, despite the fact there were people there that disagreed with me strongly on Brexit or didn't think large scale legal or illegal immigration was a problem, I did manage to have civilized conversations with all of them. The whole thing, was the most incredible experience. Now, I was in the Cubs, I was in the Scouts, I was in the Army Cadets, and I'm, I'm a pretty outdoorsy sort of person. I like going out, gardening, fishing, walking, all of those things. But it was the first time for over 40 years I'd been on anything resembling a major camping trip. The truth is, I pretty much loved every single minute of it. I love sleeping in the open, I love the noises at night, the sounds of the cuckoo, the kookaburra, the crickets, uh, seeing the wild iguanas, the possums. It really was the most absolutely beautiful place. When it came to the famous bush tucker trials, whether we had to eat or drink repulsive things or to be strapped down in a pit covered in 20 snakes, one of them which was fairly aggressive, I managed to do something that I, ne I never ever thought I could and that was to completely overcome any fears whatsoever. I literally had no fears or concerns of any kind. It didn't matter what they asked me to do, none of it, absolutely none of it fazed me. I've learned how to use mind over matter in a way I never ever thought I could. And I'll talk more about that over the course of the coming weeks. I think there are so many people who are scared of flying, scared of so many other things. And if they learn some of the basic tricks that I've learned, they too can overcome all of these problems. I loved it, I was thrilled to make the final three and congratulations to Sam Thompson who was absolutely born to be a reality TV star in a way through that genre that I frankly never could be. It seems whilst I was in there, uh, one or two people up at the top of ITV uh, were doing their best to make life quite unpleasant for me. I don't want to spoil the sort of glow that I have after doing I'm a Celebrity and I've got no criticisms at all of the production team or anybody involved in that programme. But I would say to you, Mr. Kevin Ligo, the boss of ITV, it's up to you, mate. If you want to go to war with me, you really can. The last person that did that was called Dame Alison Rose from that West Bank, and look what happened to her. So I would suggest, Mr. Ligo, that I am prepared to ignore your rude, one-handed gestures, the pathetic attempts by some of your staff to stitch me up. I'm prepared to forget all of it, if we can call a truce. But if you really, really want to go to war with me, I don't think it'll do ITV's share price an awful lot of good. So let's please end the nonsense, and let's do it now. When it comes to UK politics, well, all I can say is that the chickens are coming home to roost. For how many years have I consistently said that large-scale legal immigration into Britain is running at too big a number. Whilst I was away, we saw the revised Office of National Statistics numbers. Legal net migration for the last year running at 745,000 people. And oh yes, there'll be giant businesses, multinationals calling for ever more cheap foreign labour. But here's the point. If we go on with numbers like this, don't expect your kids to ever own a house. Don't expect to get GP appointments. Don't expect to visit your family and friends at Christmas and expect the journey time to be anything like it used to be. The truth is, we're living through a mass population crisis that is affecting the quality of life of absolutely every single one of us and doing so in a detrimental way. And yet, Rishi Sunak, David Cameron, Goodness me, even he's back. They just couldn't care less. They're not interested. They only listen to big companies and big bosses and frankly couldn't give a damn about you or the communities 
in which you live. And so the split that is coming on the centre-right of politics and has been coming and looming for many, many years is now writ large. Of course, we're talking more about Rwanda. We're talking more about the tens of thousands of young men that illegally cross the English Channel every year. And I'm not for one moment downplaying that issue. After all, I did more than anybody to highlight and raise this issue and to warn people in 2020 of the numbers that I thought would come. But the real issue is legal net migration. The fact that in a post-Brexit Britain, where we had control, this government lowered the barriers to entry in the most astonishing way, with results that I saw to be predictable. The next general election and British politics for some years to come will be utterly and completely dominated by the immigration issue. That's not something that much of mainstream media even wants or chooses to talk about. And it says that it was dead right just over two years ago for GB News to be set up as a news network because someone needs to talk about the things that ordinary folk really, really care about. I've no idea whether Sunak gets through this vote tomorrow or whether the Tory rebels vote down this new pathetic Rwanda plan. What I do know is we'll never deal with any of this all the while we stay part of the ECHR. And that's becoming pretty obvious. This is the next effectively Brexit line that's been drawn within the Conservative Party. Will the backbenchers have the guts to vote it down? Well, normally they march up to the top of the hill and they march back down again. Most of them are a pretty spineless bunch. I hope that I'm proved wrong. What is for certain is that Sunak is on course to lead the Conservative Party to their worst election result in modern times. And frankly, I think they deserve pretty much everything that's coming to them. That's enough from me for now, but back to Richard Tice. Nigel, thank you. Well, welcome back to your own show. And it's fair to say that you've already caught up on everything and you sound fired up, raring to go. But firstly, Nigel, a massive congratulations getting to the final. We have been trying here at GB News and elsewhere, as I think you may have caught up, to do our bit to help encourage people to vote in any which way. Huge, huge congratulations. Um, I guess you've, uh, you've probably enjoyed a decent meal for the first time in about three weeks. Well, yes. I mean, I mean, Richard, frankly, I've just been on the biggest detox of my life. I mean, no tea, no coffee, no grog, um, you know, light, um, very, very light calorie intakes. Surprisingly, I've only lost about seven pounds in all that time in the jungle. And that's because I've lost fat and put on muscle, which, of course, weighs more than fat. So I mean, actually, I'm probably fitter, stronger and healthier that I've been since I was about 18 years old. So, look, I, honestly, Richard, 80% of it I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, people asked me yesterday, would I do it again? I've got to tell you, the answer is yes, I would do it again. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself. But to, to come back out and see this all too predictable row going on in the Conservative Party, you know, does say there is a vacuum. Um, at the centre right of British politics. And from what I can see of the polling, you know, reform is slowly, surely, steadily, organically uh, growing. Um, and, you know, there is a major rift within the Conservative Party coming. Uh, they had the rift over Brexit. They sort of papered over the cracks by pretending to the country in 2019 that they believed in Brexit when they never really did. Um, and I think, you know, we are back in. We are back in over ECHR, a split of the same magnitude as we saw over Brexit. And I, I, and I just think the, all the signals, you know, if Braverman's out and David Cameron's back, that tells me all I need to know about Rishi Sunak and where he's taking our country. And what shocked you more, Nigel, actually? Was it the, the immigration numbers or the return of now Lord Cameron, uh, of uh, Chipping Norton to give him his new title, and the firing, the sacking of Suella Braverman, and the implications also, Nigel, that that shows for Brexit. Well, look, I mean, Cameron is the arch remainer, of course. He's now back at the heart of government. It, 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 it almost feels like the Brexiteers are being purged within the Conservative Party. The globalists are taking back over. And whilst they pay lip service to the fact we've left the European Union, 
they're not prepared at all to deal with the ECHR issue. They fiddle around the edges. Uh, they fully intend to go into the next election on immigration and other subjects. And, and for the fifth election in a row, they will willfully and openly just lie to the British public. Literally, openly lie to the British public. They'll tell them they intend to reduce immigration numbers when the truth is they intend to do no such thing. So this is all cause and effect. You know, the net migration figures of three quarters of a million are a direct result of government policy and a direct result of who is put into those senior positions. It's all one and the same thing. And we're heading on this completely hopeless trajectory. And I think that's leading you know, to millions of people, frankly, feeling as disenfranchised from politics as they were in the run up to the Brexit referendum now a decade ago. I mean, Nigel, the shocking thing about the immigration numbers of 745,000 for the year ended December 22, that was an increase of about 140,000